Proper airflow is the defining factor when examining an air conditioner's effectiveness and longevity. Proper airflow begins with good design. Welcome to this TempoZone tutorial where we hope to guide you with some general rules that will help you get the most out of your air conditioning installation through improved ductwork design. As a general rule, supply air plenums should be seven times the length of the width of the fan barrel before the first takeoff spigot. This will allow space for turbulence to settle and static pressure to equalise for even air distribution. Units with high amounts of turbulence at the spigots suffer from high pressure losses and noise. Avoid short return air plenums with inlets close to the unit. Unequal static pressure due to turbulence in short return air plenums encourages uneven airflow and high airspeed across the indoor coil, resulting in poor performance and water carryover. As a rule of thumb, the return air plenum should be as deep as the flexible connection is wide. For example, if a 450 millimeter return air flexible duct is used, the return air plenum should also be 450 millimeters deep. Units with short return air plenums will often show two circles of debris on the indoor coil after many hours of operation. Flexible duct is limited to the volume of air it can deliver by its cross-sectional area. Design flexible ducting so that the duct selected can supply the nominal airflow of the unit. Nominal airflow can be identified on the unit specification sheet. The return air flexible duct must also be capable of returning nominal airflow. Special attention needs to be considered when zone dampers are installed to assure that minimum airflow conditions are met regardless of zone operation. Minimum airspeed across the indoor coil should not subsead 1.3 meters per second. Use radii of at least 1.5 times the duct diameter for bends. Tight radii bends can double the pressure loss. 180 degree U bends surprisingly do not generate double the pressure loss of a 90 degree bend, but something much less than double. Avoid S bends as these can generate more than double the pressure loss of a 180 degree bend in fact, about 2.5 times the pressure loss. Side entry diffuser boxes generally have a much lower pressure loss than top entry diffuser. Top entry is satisfactory if the flexible duct is supported and makes a gentle radius entry. However, if the flexible duct is left flat and unsupported, then it will kink when connected to the diffuser, adding dramatically to the pressure loss. Side entry cushion head boxes are recommended as they improve equal air distribution, reduce noise and reduce draft. Oversize the flexible duct for long runs. It is not recommended to install flexible duct longer than six meters. Should longer than six meters be required, it is suggested to incorporate some rigid straight circular duct. Do not coil up surplus flexible duct for short runs. Cut to suit. The return air filter must equal the same surface area of the indoor coil face as a minimum. It is recommended to select return air filters that have a surface area larger than that of the return air coil. This can be achieved with corrugated filters or multiple grill filters. For further information to help your field diagnosis, be sure to download the latest version 8 of the TempoZone service training manual from tempozone.com or ask for a hard copy at your local branch. Be sure to also subscribe to the TempoZone YouTube channel for training and tutorial videos, product updates, and much more.